what is the answer to the existence of God? That God has spoken. He is not silent. John 1.1 says, In the beginning was the Word. We are swept right back to before creation where, in Genesis, we read, Then God said, and it was so. That almighty act of the almighty that set in motion everything we see and know and experience. How did the almighty act? He spoke. Francis Schaeffer puts it like this. Couch your concept of inspiration and revelation in these terms. He is not silent. That is the reason we know. He has told us about himself. And because he has told us about himself, that he is the infinite personal triune God, we have the answer to existence. The Bible is God's word. That is absolutely right. The words written down for us in millennia past is the very speech of the infinite one. And what does the word tell us about? What does it speak about? The word, Jesus Christ. Scripture is the word about the word, Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word, and we see God clearly and plainly throughout the Old Testament, speaking, acting, engaging with the world. In the beginning was the word, and that didn't change after he created everything by that word. But the word became flesh. The words of scripture Every minute detail speaks of one ultimate reality. The word of God himself. That's God's existence. But what about the answer to our existence? The answer is the same. Our whole existence is spoken. We are spoken. Words in the grand story of God's artistry and action. This is how the author N.D. Wilson um, understands it. Let me read. Life is a story. Christianity is no good at all as an idea. Stop thinking that an asserted proposition is the same thing as faith. It's a start, but it can also be a costume. Enflesh it. And what is Christianity incarnate? Merry Christmas. Join the wise men and find out. Follow the shepherds. Be blind by the road or hungry in a crowd or terrified in a boat or lame at a pool or dangling through the ceiling or a whore with too much perfume or a thief in a tree or on a tree or an adulteress facing execution or a liar or a sodomite or a hypocrite or a traitor or all of the above. Be guilty, betray and despise all that is true and good and beautiful. Walk past that shocked soldier with the sour sponge on the stick. Stand with Mary at the foot of the cross and see. The cross is no idea. This world is all incarnation. Words made flesh. Words. God has seen and God has said. His imagination is bone shaking and soul shivering. And he has never groped for words to capture and be those things. He imagined galaxies and clogged drains and sharks and harmonies and emotions, and running, and villains, and foes, and fungus, and that heavy marriage of airs that we call water that can skip rocks, and light, and wind, that can quench, and freeze, and baptise. He imagined and felt the ache of a mother's love, and the mortal yearning caused by the thrust of time, 
and the speed of a falcon, and the fear of a hare, and minor chords, and the smell of carpet glue. And none of these things were any good as ideas. They became words, sounds mouthed by the infinite, rhythms verbally enfleshed and shaped by the divine. They were spoken, which is just another way of saying life is a story. But God is not some lofty author far away removed. As we wait for Christmas, we are waiting to celebrate the time when the grand author spoke himself into the grand narrative of reality by coming as a little baby all those years ago. In the beginning was the word and the word became flesh. Life is a story spoken by an author who came into that story in the most profound way. What is the answer to the existence of God? What is the answer to our existence? Let's put it this way. Take a look around you now. Right now, where you are. What do you see? The answer is words. God, our God, the God, has revealed himself to us through words. As Christmas approaches, as we await that celebration of the coming of the word into the world, take a moment. Think of all those words of creation God is, at this very moment, holding together by his word. Then think of the greatest word of all, the word of his own self-expression, the person of Jesus Christ. God has spoken. He is not silent.